Hello and welcome to my new video. Lately, for some reason, everything falling apart and unfortunately to set up the darkroom in a new apartment, in a new country, it's not so easy task as you can think. For example, today I want to start to print some new stuff and the problem with my enlarger occurs once again. And as you probably know, my Darst enlarger doesn't really have a common standard light bulb and it's using extremely strange and old school halogen lamp with a hundred watts of power. From my experience I already know not all the lamps for this enlarger works and not all the lamps is exactly the same. And because last time for some reason I or forget to put the spare inside my boxes or I just throw it away, I don't really know, but the thing is I don't really have a spare light bulb. This light bulbs actually quite expensive in comparison to what you have in your apartment and it's not really easy to find this exact light bulb. First of all it's 100 watts and it requires external cooling which actually doesn't really exist in this enlarger so I think it runs a little bit hot so I just go in the next days in the supermarket and bought these two options what I want to try. One of the lights, what I want to start with and what I don't recommend to buy, this is actually 50 watt and not 100 watt halogen lamp. So it's cheaper, first of all, and secondly, it's not really the same as high quality halogen lamp. What I mean by that, first of all, it's a little bit different color temperature and it's a little bit different spectrum of light and as you can understand a spectrum of light can be important in this color photography in general. Probably not all of you know that you don't really need full spectrum of light to expose the paper with the array 4 and I think before it was laser diode and this is why you actually have a high sensitive paper because at that time laser diodes was not so powerful and I think at the moment they actually use LEDs and different frequencies LEDs because first of all it's cheaper and secondly it's much easier to assemble and much better with the price. I always want to try interpret camera in larger but for some reason I don't really want to buy cheapest alternative and the plastic build enlargers because I think they doesn't really last well for longer period of time. I definitely want to test it as a review and probably I even want to buy it but unfortunately I cannot put the trigger at the moment so let's fix what we have. For a long period of time I want to exchange my light bulb from 100 watts to 50 watts because as you remember I always expose everything with an almost fully closed aperture and in the same time I have like 6 seconds of exposure and this is my more or less working conditions on this enlarger and this magnification. It should be twice less in intensity and from the specs I unfortunately don't really found any information about 100 watt light bulb what I'm using. I think it's 1000 or something like this looks. But light bulb what I actually buy it's around 600 but as everybody knows it really depends how you use it and how you measure it and even in the same company they always lie about the intensity of the light and you cannot really compare the light bulbs with the light of different models or different reflectors or different setup. And the second thing I don't really remember if I used the filter inside my enlarger or not so I start without the filter with the settings of 50-50 and make a standard development for 45 seconds with my Adox Array 4 kit. Because I work without the access to the sink, I put all of my chemicals back in the bottles and all of my waste water in a waste bucket. Because I make steps with a fully open aperture and two seconds interval, you can honestly say this light bulb is crazy dim. It was really hard to focus on the picture and in the same time it was crazy hard to actually see the framing on the picture. So for some reason this light bulb doesn't really work well as I think. Yes, it's 50 watts and yes, it should be just, you know, one stop of light less. It means from 100 watts to 50 watts you actually should expect 
only one stop of the difference. So for example, if I using F.8, so I should go to 5.6 or something like this. Or in the same time, I go from six seconds to 12 seconds. So it should be not the big difference. But as you can see, I go with the crazy values in time. So it's basically almost one minute of exposure on the top scale. So I can say, unfortunately, I cannot use this setup at all. So it means if I go with the magnification higher, I losing all the lights and at the same time uh, my dark room unfortunately completely not dark at the moment. I have a lot of light leaks and I don't want to hang out with the paper with this room for safe light and more than 60 seconds with the fully open up paper. So I just decided to move on for 12 volts LED light bulb with the, exactly the same socket what I have for my collagen lamp. I bought the maximum what I can buy from the Osram. So this light bulb have a 3000 kelvins and in the same time it should actually produce light as a 50 watt halogen lamp what I actually used a few seconds before. So my main idea was to just compare if I can switch directly to LED from the light bulb with the halogen. But as you can see from here, the this LED light, because it's a single chip LED, it doesn't really have any backsplash. So it means the all light goes from the main module directly with a special lens and it directly goes inside the mixing box and from there in the lens and make a projection and it in general produce kind of the same amount of light but you can understand it's more directional and on this light bulb I have a lot of light escaping from the back. With the more expensive light what I used before as you can understand it's not the case and this light completely not transparent from the bottom side and has much thicker coating of the reflector on the back side. So for tests I make almost exactly the same so I start with the 10 seconds and increase 5 second interval for each opening on my test printer to just find out what is actually exposure for this particular setup. I found quite interesting that for halogen lamps in the manual it's written 0 seconds to full intensity. And as you can understand it's completely not the case. The lamp itself should heat up to more than 200 degrees to reach the intensity of the light. So the LED in comparison have much quicker response time and much quicker stability in time. And my first print, as you can see, looks much brighter. So I almost have around 30 seconds my goal setup and goal print. Because settings was 50-50, I start with the magenta correction, make a print and trying to find optimal setting. And as you can see, the magenta correction also works. So let's select and make second correction for the yellow channel and trying to find the optimal yellow and magenta channels. With this test I try to make corrections separately for only one reason and this reason is actually can I separate two channels with my existing filters. And when I try to make the bigger print I always forget to switch up the filters back inside and this is why I don't really like the low intensity light because even with a fully open aperture I cannot see anything on the table and it should be completely dark in the room. So I reprinted and this is my first result. As you can see even on the wet print it's a little bit reddish so I think I need more correction and last time I think I used the filter which pop up inside the enlarger and it's basically give you a boost of 40 or 50 on the yellow and magenta channel from initial correction. But in my case, if I flip up this filter, I completely cannot see anything and the intensity of the light is not enough. So I print few corrections and I basically land on this particular print. I still think it's undercorrected and it requires a little bit more cyan channel correction. So basically move both channels higher. But in terms of color, I think it works fine. So for some applications or some enlargers, I think you can directly exchange the halogen lamp to LED lamp and doesn't really notice a difference. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.